Welcome. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the life beyond all death, the joy beyond all sorrow, our everlasting home. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us come before God who calls us to repentance. Let's take a moment to reflect before we continue. God of life, by the resurrection of your son, you make everything new. We are frightened, God, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O oh God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim that our sins are forgiven and we are released. The joy of the Lord is our strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are ours forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song in this Easter season full of life. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, sing to the, our God. Oh, sing to our God. Cantar al Señor.
Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of our risen Lord and Savior be with you. If you're able, if you've got folks around you, take a moment, share God's embrace, God's peace. Um, if you are by yourself and you've seen us do this before, cross your arms, hold your shoulders, give yourself a big hug and feel that peace. I bid you grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So before I read the gospel, I want to begin today with this question. In my life, I wish I had more blank. Take a moment. Fill in that blank. In my life, I wish I had more fill in the blank. Okay, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. Now, I'm going to read from Scripture, so I'm going to look down a little bit, okay? So it begins at verse 1 in chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was trying to say. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. But just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. 
I have received this command from my father. Okay, the line that stood out for me was this, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life. That phrase, as much as any in the Bible, captures what most people I know, including myself, long for. Not just more life, but abundant life. Not just more stuff, but life, real life. So Jesus in this passage makes a promise. It's a huge promise. It's a, a life-changing promise. Hear it again of Jesus. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. But Jesus doesn't just make a promise here. He puts his life where his promise is. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And I lay my life down in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. But why? Why does Jesus, the good shepherd, lay down his life? To tell us that we are, in fact, loved. That we are loved. That we are enough. Jesus, especially in John's gospel, doesn't lie, uh, it, die be in order to make some kind of payment to God or to satisfy God's wrath or to pay the penalty for sin. Jesus in John's gospel is the one who comes to make the invisible God visible and the unapproachable God accessible. Jesus comes to reveal that God loves the whole world, no exceptions. Jesus comes, that is, to tell us that we are already beloved, that we are enough, that God's unconditional ending love we've already got. The good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, for us, simply out of love. But, you know, I... Uh, Maybe that's hard to believe at times, which is why we should listen even more of Je to Jesus' message here. I lay down my life for the sheep, he says. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Jesus, in other words, didn't come just for that original group of disciples. He came for all of us, for everyone. And we're now invited to hear and believe this message of love and grace and acceptance and to share it with each other and all those that we meet. So, you know, I think it's worth explaining why we're putting ourselves out there to do this. Okay. Jesus' message of love needs to be said again and again, not just by me but by you, by, by all his disciples. If we don't remind ourselves and others of this message, who will? This is what it means to be part of the body of Christ, to remind each other of God's promises and speak Jesus' message of love, acceptance, forgiveness, and grace to each other. And who knows, maybe we'll find the strength and the courage to say that to somebody else as well. Okay, I'm going to take you back to that original question. I can imagine all your answers to the question that I asked, you know, in my life, I wish I had more fill in the blank. I'm not going to speculate here on your responses, okay? Um, but if we're honest, I believe we all have the desire for something more, especially in these strange and difficult times. I got to tell you, um, I really struggled with this text for today, I, all week. Because when I think of the, the countless, the thousands, maybe uh, millions, who if they heard these words of Jesus, I have come that you can have life and have it abundantly, they might possibly say it isn't true for them. 
But that is exactly why Jesus said to them, lived it out. It's, and here's what it is, I think. It's love. I hope I'm not taking too much liberty here with Jesus' words, but I want to say them again with one word changed. And, and it really helped me to place life and life abundantly in a way where, where maybe we can be sustained. I have come that you may have love and have it abundantly. Changing the word life to love, I have come that you may have love and have it abundantly. We know we are loved eternally, right? And in the here and now, and in the midst of all and all of creation. We know what it is. Love. The love God has for us and all creation, the love that we can share with each other and others as we move forward together day by day through these very difficult times. And always when I find myself in kind of this place, I'm reminded always, and you know this is my kind of go-to verse here, but the words from the end of the chapter 8 of Romans. And these words, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor things present or yet to come, nor disease nor pandemic nor isolation nor anything else will defeat us. Because nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord our good shepherd. Amen. We sing a song in response to that love of God. It's a psalm today that we've sung many times. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, and I invite you to sing or to hum those words over and over, maybe until you believe them. <laughs>
prepare a table before me. The Lord is my shepherd. In the presence of my enemy. The Lord is my shepherd. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. The Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. The Lord is my shepherd. All the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of love forever and forever. Forever and forever. As Chris plays, we continue to meditate. Follow me. Even when I'm here in my home. For this is the house of the Lord. The Lord of love. Forever. the church throughout the ages we proclaim together our living faith using the words of the apostles creed join me i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. We've come to prayer today, singing the song, The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. If you're like me, you're starting to go stir crazy. And you need a little help. We have the Spirit to intercede for us. Listen and sing. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to seeds for us with sighs too deep for words to express oh. let us pray 
Gracious God, it is good for us to gather as your beloved in community. We treasure your presence with us. Be with us in these days as we tire of being alone. Continue to surround us with your sheltering wings. Keep encouraging us to connect as we are able, reaching out to neighbors in need. And help us to pray when we don't know how. We sing, the Spirit intercedes. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh, healing God, our peace and our strength our nation and world continue to face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, all who are sick or in isolation, the homeless and hungry, those who grieve the death of loved ones, those who have lost their jobs, their income and their security, Grant wisdom and patience and clarity to healthcare workers and to volunteers, especially as their work caring for others continues to put them at great risk. Guide all who continue to make important and difficult decisions how best to love and serve in families, in congregations, workplaces and communities. Be especially with those whom we name now silently or aloud in our homes and in our hearts as we pray now. trust when we don't know how. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh. Loving God, Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you um, before David and Christopher, you know, lead us out in, in song before the benediction and dismissal. Um, again, I, it's just hard sometimes to put into words how grateful uh, we are for your love, for the, countless ways I'm seeing people reach into each other's lives carefully and, and safely and 
making sure that uh, connections get made as as uh, as we can. Um, just a reminder, you know. Um, thank you for your donations to the food pantry. Uh, our office is open Tuesdays and Thursdays from from nine until three, and and uh, that's best time to really you know bring additional things for the food pantry. It's uh, it's doing a great job. And um, also want to thank you for your, you know, continuing financial support for the church. It's always ongoing and, and uh, just thank you. A um, couple of prayer requests that I, I, I want to just put out there. Um, I get together with um, some of my colleagues and pastors from the Heart of Florida Conference, which is Central Florida Lutheran congregations like ours. And well, um, he wasn't able to weigh in this week. We heard uh, that Shepherd of the Hills out in Claremont uh, has had three COVID-19 deaths. And uh, so just, you know, we need to pray for all of our brothers and sisters, um, uh, but I wanna particularly lift up Shepherd of the Hills in Claremont. Um, the other piece uh, is our preschool uh, is going to do the term soft opening uh, uh, tomorrow and and uh, with not near as many kids as you know we would ordinarily have but it's a good way to start you know putting that back together. So I want you to pray for, for our teachers and uh, staff and parents and kids as we do that. Uh, and then, you know, just continue to be safe. Um, we know what the right things are and, you know, just continue to do them. And uh, we take it day by day. Amen, okay. David, Christopher, thank you. Send us out, please. sing a song that we've been singing these weeks we are bound together bound together and finally woven with love let's sing oh we are bound together and finally woven we're bound together and finally woven we're bound together and finally woven with love let's sing that again we are bound together and finally woven we're bound together and finally woven we're bound together and finally woven with love you know pastor told us that this is good shepherd sunday and a shepherd is the one who keeps the sheep together with love so we sing one more time. Oh, we are bound together and finally woven. We're bound together and finally woven. We're bound together and finally woven with love. Finally woven. Finally woven with love. Finally woven with love. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and love and grace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we go now, now into the world maybe or you know, across the room to do something, you know, uh, but go in peace as we love and serve the Good Shepherd, our Lord. Amen. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye.